is the Opali. When we left off, we were living the good life at California's Channel Islands and on approach to Catalina after an overnight passage. We are at Catalina Island at a place called Cat Harbor, which is on the back side of the island away from the mainland right at the, the isthmus, the really narrow part, the Two Harbors area. And it is a really nice anchorage in here. Super calm and protected, but very deep as well. There's a ton, everywhere on Catalina, there's a ton of moorings, and here is no exception. And the moorings are in most of the desirable anchorage area. The majority of the bay here outside the moorings is quite deep. There's a little area off to the side where we found some 35 foot water, but most of the bay is like 90 feet or more. So pretty deep and tricky to anchor if there's a lot of boats in here, but we got lucky. We came in and stern tide, found a nice spot. While we're here, there's been some really nice snorkeling and free diving and spear fishing. The water's been quite clear. We've seen some really cool stuff. So that's been fun to check out. got back from a little snorkel and spearfish just outside the bay here we went out to a little point there's an awesome kelp kind of forest that we checked out found some lobsters although we were not successful in grabbing them but beautiful kelp forest we did some spearfishing got some fish and we're gonna fillet up our catch now nice headshot you got mm, well, I basically walked right up to him <laughs> So bad shooting them when they're like right in front of me, I guess. <laughs> Alright, our main reason for coming in here was to get some cell signal and reception so we could do a bit of planning and coordination. When we were out at the Channel Islands off Santa Barbara area, we had very limited spotty, we just pick up a little bit of cell service. And we don't have our satellite weather activated right now, so we wanted to do a good weather check because we are going to be headed further south down to Ensenada. It's about 130 or so miles to Ensenada. It's so not terribly far, but something that we definitely want to have some good weather to do. The last week or so there's been virtually no wind, so it would be a boater down there, which we don't want to do. Looks like maybe in the next couple days here, there might be a little bit of a northeast, possibly Santa Ana wind coming in, which actually could make for a nice passage down the direction we're going, south. We made our way out of Catalina last night, uh, got underway probably like 8.30, maybe just before 9 o'clock at night. That was our intended plan, uh, looking at some forecoming weather. It's going to be a very large Santa Ana system coming through, which is very strong. 
northeast wind from the inland and then offshore can really pick up steam. I think they're forecast to be some gusts to 35, 40 knots with very short steep seas this weekend. It's also generally the same systems that create the very strong El Norte weather in the Sea of Cortez. So we've been waiting for some wind to get south anyway, and we have some wind. Uh, it's very light right now. Uh, it's supposed to be west 10, it basically is west 7 to 10 knots. And that should start picking up throughout later today, I think. Um, all the way down. We've probably done about 40 miles, a little over 40 miles since we left. And right now we're just off of Catalina's back behind me here, the sun's just coming up. And off to my side is uh, uh, San Clemente Island, just hidden a little bit, uh, starting to get covered in some cloud. But it's a military only island there, you can't go on shore that, uh, of that island. And this is the area where there's a lot of military uh, training and practice going on, so you're really going to be switched on. Um, it's quite often you hear the warships calling people on the radio, letting them know, hey, we're half a mile off your bow. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of live firing that goes on out here, a lot of different military training of all sorts of things, I think diving, helicopters, whatever it is they do out here. So you just want to stay out of their way, of course. Uh, we passed a couple of warships in the night. I don't think anything got closer than six miles. But it's looking like a nice sail right now. We're headed south, we're just passing the San Diego area, and just as we thought we were finally out of the military practice warship exercise area, we've had a few pass pretty close by, and there's another guy up ahead of us that's doing live firing, and we're going to call him to make sure that we are not in his area. So the warships obviously have right away, or I don't really want to argue with them either way. But this one, for example, they have very large exclusion zones. This guy wants us to keep, I think it was 11 miles from his position, which is a very large swath of ocean that we're passing right through. We're in international waters right now and we're passing uh, due south. So for us to kind of circle around and avoid the 11 miles is quite a bit out of the path and out of the way we want to go. Um, of course, if that's what we have to, we will, but we're going to call them, uh, Hillary's going to call them and just see what time they finish at and uh, just double check everything with them. Warship 1-6, Warship 1-6, Warship 1-6. This is sailing vessel Yeringa on 1-6, over. I think they're... Yeah, ready to go. Warship 1-6, Channel 1-6, over. Good afternoon. Um, can we ship to Channel 7-2, please? 7-2, us. Warship 1-6, this is sailing vessel Yeringa on 7-2, over. Warship 1-6, Channel 7-2, how can I help you? Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to double check your current position um, and area that you need to clear. We are currently about 18 miles to the north of you, headed on a south-southeast course. Uh, Eureka, this is Warship 16, currently in position 3218, decimal 5 north, 11744, decimal 2 west. 
I'm proceeding uh, northbound, and my intent is to fire north. I need approximately 10,000 yards, five nautical miles around me. But I will be shooting north, and I will verify all the range is visually and electronically clear before I use my any of my weapon systems. Copy, understood on the position and firing direction. Um, how long will your exercises be taking place this afternoon? Over. Yes, Captain, approximately uh, 10 to 15 minutes, as long as I don't have any uh, casualties, I'll be using small arms. The small machine gun tends to smaller range, so I expect to be done pretty quick. Uh, we'll advise when uh, firing exercise is complete on channel 1 6. Over. That's a good copy. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Uringa switching back to 1 6. Warship 1 6, monitoring channel 1 6, 1 3 out. So I guess they give themselves an extra <laughs> buffer zone. They only are going to be firing five miles, but they want you to stay 11 miles away so they don't shoot you. So apparently only small arms fire and it won't be going on for long unless there's casualties, which, <laughs> wow, it's kind of kind of interesting. So anyway, that puts us out of his way, right? We should yes. be, I think even on our current course, we'll probably be within about six miles. Um, he is obviously heading north towards us and he moves pretty fast, so. And he's firing to the north. Yeah, so we need to make sure we kind of, we might need to alter course a little bit to the, to the east or something here, we'll have a look. Well, good evening. We have officially just left uh, the USA and entered Mexico. It's a pretty relaxed affair, uh, especially when it's calm out here. The seas are relatively calm today and there's no traffic out here. Now, earlier today we had a lot of traffic. We had a lot of military traffic just north of here. There's warships around everywhere doing their live fire exercises. But now, it's peaceful. Even back over behind me here, these are the uh, Coronado Islands, which are the first real bit of Mexican um, land that you can get to out of San Diego there and it's really popular with fishermen uh, there have a lot of fishing stuff that goes out of San Diego and does, does the fishing around the islands there see a little bit of cloud on the horizon here there is a little bit of rain around uh, we haven't had any yet it is forecast and you can kind of see it falling but it's really nice and calm right now. One of the reasons we decided to leave in the middle of the night last night, well not in the middle of the night, we left about 9 p.m. last night. There was forecast, really strong winds coming in this evening for the Los Angeles area. A lot of the California coast there, there's these Santa Ana winds they get, they call them, and they're really strong, really hot winds that come down through central California and then flush out uh, to sea there. So they've got a lot of warnings right now for Catalina Island, um, maybe not this far south, but there was a nice 10 knots breeze forecast for here. We wanted to kind of move on down without having to deal with the 40 knot gusts that we're going to get up there. And uh, we're ready to get into Ensenada. So we just had dinner, cooked some really tasty pizzas and watched a show while our trusty wind vane was up here steering away, doing what they do. And now we love this aft cabin down here because that's where Hillary's sleeping. That's where we've both been sleeping. There's a couple of little port lights there, so you can actually they open up into the cockpit and it's really easy to communicate if you need any help or anything. But she's just about to go take a nap. Um, no set time for that. Last night we did roughly two hours each. Tonight, I'm just gonna wake her when I'm getting a bit tired, but we're gonna try for like three or four hours, something like that, and get us a good night rest. Um, and we planned our departure last night so that we would arrive into Ensenada in daylight, and hopefully, early morning, middle of the day type daylight, so we had plenty of buffer time if anything went wrong. That's always important to us. We don't like to arrive into foreign harbors especially and ones that may not be well um, lit up or good aids to navigation. So we wanted to arrive in there tomorrow morning and depending on the winds, we'll probably do that about noonish tomorrow. Uh, we'll just see how the winds are. Right now we're probably doing around about four knots, maybe three and a half. But it's a really comfortable sail. Uh, the winds come around out of the south, southwest a bit, so we're close hauled right now, um, or maybe even close reaching. Most of the day though, we've been on the beam or behind the beam. Um, but it's been a really light day sail. Fishing lines are out, no fish. That's something that'll come in, we bring those in in the evening. So we're gonna do that now as the sun's 
as the sun's setting there, I'll bring those fishing lines in. I'm gonna finish up the dishes and then just come and keep watch. That's it, there's not much to it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's a lot of different ways that you can um, do your passages, but really we find trying to keep it as relaxed as possible. Um, we never really have any issue with who's in command. Um, we work pretty, pretty good as a pair with that. Um, and it makes it pretty easy to get stuff done. Uh, as we sailed into the sunset with beautiful conditions, we were excited to arrive and check into Mexico. But more on that next time. Thanks so much for watching and a huge thanks to our patron Adrift Crew. If you enjoyed, please share with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe. Until next time. Pray regularly, scheduled marine information broadcast, listen channel 22 Alpha, frequency 157.1 MHz, out.